Uh, good morning, Josh. Good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm writing about Emmanuel Agba today, and uh, his turnaround, career turnaround, at least on the sack side, is pretty stunning, pretty remarkable. How important is he to what you do, and how many different ways can you use him? Well, I, th I think, you know, as we talk about Emmanuel, I think that the thing is he's shown the ability to be multiple, and we can move him around in multiple spots. Uh, he does a lot of things for us. Uh, he can set the edge. He can handle double teams. Um, he can rush the passer. He, he can rush the passer individually. He can do it with games. Um, he's like, like I've said numerous times, he's a diligent worker uh, and he constantly is striving to get better. And, um, you know, so hopefully uh, we can continue that, continue to do multiple things with him, continue to get some improvement. And, um, you know, I know he, he works at his craft and takes it very seriously. Alan. Good morning, Josh. Um, Good morning. Josh, how much of your game plan every week is designed specifically to try to create confusion in the opposing offense? Well, I think is, you know, each week we look at it, uh, we look at what we have available to us. And we look at, uh, you know, what our opponent's trying to do. And as always, any time that we can put pressure on the offensive line, put pressure on the quarterback, which hopefully in turn puts pressure on the coordinator, uh, just to get them a little bit off balance, uh, that's always the goal. Uh, I mean, it's easier said than done. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. But, yeah, we're always trying to um, – you know, make, make sure that we put pressure on the offensive line, put pressure on the quarterback. And then, you know, uh, some weeks that's by scheme, some weeks it's by varying uh, fronts, some weeks it's by varying coverage. Um, you know, ultimately what we're trying to do is just put, put our guys in the best position to succeed, um, you know, on a week in and week out basis. Steve. Josh, I also have an Ogba uh, question. Uh, what has clicked for him this year? Why is he having a breakout season now? Well, I don't, you know, you know, watching him on film, uh, you know, at Kansas City and Cleveland, you know, you, you obviously like some things that you saw there. Um, you know, again, my experience with him has been this year. And, you know, I think you always kind of try to go into a season with an open mind. Uh, regardless of what you've done in the past or haven't done, um, I'm, you know, I'm not sure, you know, how much different it is than years ago for him. Um, you know, again, like I said, he, he works hard. He works at his craft. Uh, he's constantly trying to get better, puts extra time in at it. And, um, you know, and he's had some production out on the field. And like I said, there's, there's a lot of other things that he does for us that, that probably doesn't get noticed. Um, but, uh, you know, and we're going to continue to try to improve that, uh, week by week. Stop it. Hey coach, uh, you know, two defensive touchdowns, uh, special teams touchdowns. You guys are getting a lot of turnovers forced, you know, with X and Emmanuel doing their jobs. Um, do you see your players really taking on, um, you know, being happy to see some success and, and, and striving for more because they have been successful in certain opportunities? Well, you know, one thing is I would say, you know, we, we put a good amount of time into creating turnovers, forcing turnovers, um, scoop and score, cradle fumble. Um, there's numerous different techniques and drills that these guys do. They put in a lot of time and effort at it. Um, and obviously, you know, I mean, we get, you know, we only get so many shots at it and um, for all the time, effort and energy that they put into it, I, you know, I'm sure they're, that they're gaining confidence in it. And, uh, I'm sure they're, they're thrilled and excited. You know, our guys genuinely like playing for each other and they're excited when guys make plays and, you know, it's kind of something that, you know, we stress, we, we're trying to get the ball, uh, we work at it. And, um, you know, it's showing up a little bit in the game and, uh, you know, and, and we need to keep continuing to work at it. So it does show up for us, you know, week, week by week. Joe. 
Hey, Josh, good morning to you. Um, good morning. I wanted, wanted to ask you about uh, Raekwon Davis. How did he do? How is he doing? I think, uh, you know, when, when you turn on the film, um, you know, Raekwon, he's been working extremely hard at practice. Um, you know, and I think there was some good things. Uh, I think the thing that we're striving for is consistency on a play in play out basis. Uh, I think we're working towards that. Um, there was definitely some good things that he did uh, on the game that I think we're improving. Uh, there's still some things that, you know, that we need to work on to get better. And he's working hard at that as, as all of our guys are. So, um, you know, and that's really what you want as a coach is when a guy's given an opportunity, you, you really want them to make the most of it. And, you know, and I know it's important to all of our guys because you see the work and the time that they put into it. Travis. Hey, Coach, good morning. Um, yesterday we had Emmanuel on, and he talks a lot about the trust that has been developed between the players and the coaching staff and how he kind of has a perspective that he gives you guys to help you craft up plays for him and stuff and, and, and fill in behind him when he makes a rush or whatever it might be. I was just curious to get your perspective on how that trust works for you and the players, not just with Emmanuel, but with the entire defense. Well, as a coach, there's, there's some things that you, you can't see in real time or on the field or from the, the surface that you have at the sideline that, uh, you know, you can go back uh, when you watch the game film, you can kind of see it. And the players, you know, they, they can give you some good information on the sideline. And, uh, you know, and obviously when that's confirmed and they're giving you the correct information, if there's things that they see that they can do that will help us, uh, you know, we're all for that. So, um, you know, it's it's like, you know, it's no one man show. So, you know, everybody has input and, um, you know, ultimately we're all trying to make sure that we're successful as a group. And if guys are seeing things and sometimes it's not even an individual thing, a guy will say, hey, look, if I do this, this can open up this for such and such. So um, it's uh, it's a constant battle to gain information and you're looking for as much good information as you can possibly give and obviously when players give you good information uh you know um, you you can use that and um you know i, I think you know as they trust us we trust them i, I think that's you know a, a good working relationship adam uh, yeah, this is the second week in a row, you, you, you went into battle without three of your assistants. Uh, I was wondering how this experience has been like for you personally, uh, the, the kind of like a, a, a double challenge, one, uh, putting together a game plan and, and executing it without guys that you rely on, and two, coming into a place where, you know, the virus has been and now it's been concerning for you. How, how has this experience been? Uh, you know, I, I think you just kind of take things as they come. And you kind of deal with them. They're like, every, you know, it's just, a, it's another challenge. It's another obstacle. I think that's the great thing about football. I, I think football has a lot of life lessons in it. That's why I enjoy it and love it so much. I think it's very closely related to life. Uh, there's plenty of ups and downs and adversity in the game. And, you know, you just, whatever it is, you, you kind of deal with it. Uh, you don't, you don't run from it. And uh, you just make the best of the situation. And I think that's what all of us try to do in everyday life because, uh, you know, problems always come up, you know, and uh, Adam, I can see you got blinds back there. Like, you know, the blinds at our house, they stop working. So, you know, we, we got to get those fixed. Um, so th there's things that happen, you know, on a daily basis that I think you just kind of deal with it as it, as it comes. And, you know, and I think, um, uh, like I've said time and time again, Flo and Chris have done a great job of, uh, you know, bringing guys into this building that are mentally tough, that can handle, you know, hey, hey, we got to go through this protocol. We got to do this. We got to do that. And they don't skip a beat because they're focused on the task at hand. So I don't think you really reflect on it or think about it. You just like, what do I need to do to get the job done? And I think that's the way, you know. Our, our coaches, our players, our everybody in our organization. I, I think that's the way they approach it. I got time for one more, Cameron. Hey, Josh, uh, you, you've had some, I guess, some ball hawk corners in your career from Malcolm and JC and, and now X. I'm curious for you as a play caller, how does that change what you do 
when you know you have a guy who, you know, can make plays on the back end? Well, I think, you know, ultimately what you're, what you're doing is, is, you, is for every position is you're trying to put the guys in positions to highlight the things that they do well. And, um, you know, so especially for guys in those situations, sometimes you, you try to put them where you think the ball's going or you try to put them on routes that you think that, hey, you know, if they throw up a 50-50 ball here, it's more than 50-50, we got a chance. So I think it, it goes back to whether you're a corner, a ball hawking corner, or you're a defensive tackle. I think from a schematic approach, you're just trying to put guys in position where you can highlight their talents and th they can make plays. Because, um, you know, ultimately, you know, uh, the turnovers help, the, the, the ball disruption plays help, the tackles for loss, they help. And I, I think that's what goes into it um, is you, you're just trying to put them in the best position to succeed. And I mean, obviously we're not a hundred percent at that. And, you know, and, and we'll, there's ob obviously things that we can work on as a coaching staff to put guys in better spots, but uh, that's the goal. And that's what we're trying to do. So, and then, you know, obviously, you know, we've been fortunate to have some, you know, good players that have a great, good skill set and they're able to make plays. Hi, Chan. Uh, one thing that I guess would be helpful to determine this year with your two rookies who are college quarterbacks with Malcolm and with Lynn is whether they're going to be just change of pace gimmicky players or whether one or both could develop into legitimate NFL slot receivers. Could you talk about each of them separately about where each stands in terms of becoming a legitimate NFL slot receiver as opposed to this gimmick guy? Um. I think anytime you get a player, you hope that they're going to develop into something uni unique for your football team. And that takes on different roles, whether it's, you know, doing some specialty things or playing, you know, a bunch of snaps at one position uh, or the slot position. Um, Malcolm has come a long way. You know, he, he didn't play receiver. He'd been a quarterback and um, uh, he's, he's, he's really – tried to work to become a, a better receiver. He, uh, he's still learning. Um, Lynn's the same way. Lynn's a, a gifted, talented athlete, and um, he, he's showed that in college, and uh, we've seen flashes of it here, and hopefully he'll continue to develop uh, the way we think he can. Both of them have some unique talents to, uh, to themselves, and um, we'll see if we can develop them and, and make them be an integral part of offense. What direction it's going to go right now, I don't think anybody knows. Travis? Hey, good morning, Coach. I wanted to ask you about your team. Your offense is like flexibility with different guys playing multiple snaps every week. We had so many guys, whether it's Malcolm Perry, like you mentioned there, some of the tight ends playing, Savon Ahmed. Have you been maybe impressed or surprised by how flexible this young team is with its next man up mentality? Does it surprise you at all how much success they've had with different guys playing so many snaps? You know, I think uh, uh, college programs are really good now, and I think guys come to us uh, in a very good uh, frame of mind and uh, uh, they're able to go out and play uh, and we shouldn't have them on the team if we don't think they can play so uh, I, I think this uh, next man up mentality is is exactly what we have and we've been fortunate to have uh, these guys are, are very strong mentally and they want to play they're eager uh, and when they get the opportunity they try to take advantage of it so Am I surprised? No, I'm not really surprised. I'm, I'm, uh, I thought that's, I thought that's the way a guy should be. I think all, all players should be that way. Cam, hey Chan, uh, we figured you and Fitz would have some chem chemistry because of your time together. It seems like you and Tua have started to have some rhythm too. Where would you say you and him are as far as your comfort and what each person wants um, out of the offense? Uh. Well, you'd have to ask him on his part. So, um, but from my part, uh, he's doing, he's getting better every week and doing what we, you know, what we hoped he would do. Um, he's taking care of the football, being very smart about that. He's making plays. 
Uh, is he missing some things? Yeah, he's missing some things, but that'll come with experience. That'll come with time. We just got to continue to help him grow, and uh, hopefully he learns. And as he continues to learn, uh, I think it's slowed down. I've made that statement a bunch of times, I know, but I think it's slowed down for him uh, each week. So uh, the more he plays, hopefully the, the better he gets and the more comfortable he'll feel. Omar? Coach, I have this question, and I've, I've asked this for over a decade, and I've got various answers. Can you as an offensive coach coach accuracy and anticipation from a quarterback? Uh, it, it's, hard, it's hard to coach accuracy. Uh, you can – you can teach an anticipation a little bit, but they've got to believe it. Um, if a guy doesn't believe it, uh, it's very, it's very difficult. It's hard to coach accuracy. I, I can't get a guy more accurate than he is, but I think we can help him on the anticipation part. Kim. I'm oh, sorry. Um, um, Chan, with uh, Salvin Ahmed, um, we got to see him in his first start this past weekend. What about his his skill set sort of allowed him to be as successful as he was early on? You know, I think he has very good instincts as a runner. He can, he can see a crease, and then he's got the ability, once he sees a crease, to go make something happen. Um, you know, we had, uh, we had a couple of long runs by him, two or three this week, that – uh, you know, I should I shouldn't say long runs, but unfortunately they've been long by our standards this year, and um, we've gotten uh, we got some good uh, execution there uh, from him seeing things, understanding uh, where his cuts are probably going to be. That doesn't mean they'll always be there. That's where the instincts come in, and then the ability to explode. And he's got that ability. He's got that explosive ability. Uh, and he's taking care of the football. If he wasn't taking care of the football, uh, it'd be a tough deal. Joe? Hey, Chan, I, I got a trivia question for you. You might have heard it. It, it kind of fascinated me. The last time the Dolphins were 6-3, and three, do you know who the offensive coordinator was? No. Chan Gailey. It was 2001. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, 19 years ago, that was – uh, Fiedler and Chambers and uh, Lucas and Lamar Smith and Travis Miner and Chris Chambers. How yeah. I, it just interests me, you know, so so long ago. Uh, what do you remember about that group and how have you changed and how has the locker room changed and how has football changed in all that time? Uh, that was a that was a strong, tough. I mean, they were tough football players. Uh, uh, really tough football players, but you had to be. It was it was more, you know, let's run it down your throat mentality then. Now it's let's spread it out and throw it around the park, you know. Uh, but uh, that group, um, they were they were really a strong, tough football team, and uh, we could we could run it. Uh, we had a tight end that played, I can't remember his name, but he played tackle at Texas A&M and he's playing tight end for us. And I mean, we just ran the football and Jay did a great job and Chris had a good year that year. It, 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 it was a fun year. Those two years were fun years. Stop it. Hey coach, uh, you know, just looking at this roster up and down, it would appear you guys would be weak at running back and weaker at receiver without Preston Williams. But you guys have been able to run off five straight wins because of the help with the defense and special teams as well. Offensively, what 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 is it a factor of that, that you guys are having success? Is it to and not turning the ball over? Is that next next man up mentality like you talked about earlier? What's what's really working for this offense knowing that you guys are down some bodies on some important positions? I think we have guys that understand the system and what we're trying to get done. I think they they um, have um, realized the importance of being where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, doing what you're supposed to do, and uh, they they take you know what coach says about hey let's pay attention to details. I think they've done that, 
uh, the thing about it is we've had some, uh, some success, not a ton, but we've had some success, but we, we can get better and we need to get better. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can be, uh, not what we are at this present time. Final question. We'll go to Adam. Fingers crossed. I don't freeze this time, but I, I, what I was trying to ask you about was Tua and he was a year past his, his hip injury. And, and, and my question was this, why is he, his mindset, the perfect guy to not only recover from that, but now immediately, play at a, you know, pretty high level, at least to our eyes. What is it personally that, that makes that click? Uh, I think um, he is a glass half full guy. Everything is going to work out. Everything's going to get better. Everything's going to be just fine. Let's just keep doing what we do. And uh, he, if the trainer says hop on your right foot 20 times, he hops on his right foot 20 times, even if you're not looking. So he, he will do all the little things to uh, get where he needs to be. And he has no, he has no reservations about any of that. He, he, he enjoys it. He enjoys the challenge. Yeah, I was curious. How many kickers did you bring in for a tryout this week after that miss? <laughs> you know me. Hey. And not, not doesn't even doesn't even register me. You know, he's he's in a good spot. You know, those things are going to happen. And you know, the best thing about it was being able to come back and get one more after that. So, uh, uh, like where we're at, Josh. Hey, Danny. It feels like we could ask you about any part of the special teams that they all uh, really came and performed this past Sunday. But, uh, you know, I'll ask about Jakeem Grant, you know, another good performance from him. And, and actually um, something I didn't even know. Uh, I saw Joe tweeted yesterday that he leads the league in punt return yards. Just uh, it's a repetitive question, but when he's able to do that on, you know, now almost seems like a consistent basis. How much does that uh, help your team and help the offense? Well, obviously, I, I think, you know, any, any time you're able to, you know, get good returns, you know, obviously that was three returns uh, of close to 20 yards. So you're talking, you know, two first downs uh, based on how it played complementary. You know, a lot of those balls were punted uh, with a, ne a negative situation in terms of, uh, where the punt was coming from, you know, from the Chargers. So our starting field position on on those three drives after those returns were all either across the 50-yard line or, or just behind it. So obviously when you have that starting field position, it really puts the offense and really the team in a good position where, you know, a couple first downs with Jason, we're, we're right back into field goal range where we have scoring opportunities. Soften. Hey, Danny, just want to let you know, Adam Beasley was the one that jinxed uh, Jason. He, <laughs> he tweeted he was perfect, like the 72 Dolphins after the second kick. Um, I want to ask you about the punt. Yeah, he, he, you just locked our bandwidth here, just locked up. I didn't get the question. Hey, stop it. All right, let's go to Joe. We'll come back to Safed. I think Safed was going to ask you about the punt block, so I'll ask you too. I'm always interested in, in and I know you, you sometimes don't want to reveal secrets, but but um, if there's anything you can tell me about these two parts of the play, how um, rare is it for the a corner to uh, blitz on a punt from the outside like Perry did? Uh, I don't know if you, you do that regularly or if that's a unique call and then also if the punter didn't drop or bobble the ball did Van Ginkle still have a shot at it so it's kind of two parts there yeah uh, I think number one you know is it something you see a lot no you know a lot more times than not you know when you see that 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 corner adding himself it's in a different timing sequence uh, but uh, you know it's just something that's you know in one of our concepts that you know like everything, you have different things that you like some weeks, you don't like other weeks, and then the opportunity presented itself to actually make the call, which is, you know, the hardest thing, you know, you don't have control over how many opportunities you're going to get in certain phases and when those things do present themselves. In terms of being able to make 
make the play, whether it was Bob or not. You know, we we thought, you know, Andrew had a good get off. He got on the edge. You know, when you look where and how he blocked it, you know, we felt confident that he would have an opportunity. Uh, so, you know, that's the unknown. But uh, we liked it, and unfortunately it was successful. Omar? First, I want to apologize for Team Sun Sentinel snitching sap. That's not that's not cool. Uh, and second, um, when you have a head coach who has special teams experience like Flo does, um, how much easier does that make for you to sort of convince him to try some of the things that you 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 want to do in the game? Well, I, I think it's big. Uh, you know, with having that background that that flow has is the, the communication is, I don't want to say simpler, uh, but it's an easier conversation because he understands a lot of the concepts, uh, techniques, both in terms of, you know, what we're looking for and, you know, how it's going to affect or what impact it could have on the opposition because he understands both sides of it. Uh, so obviously having that background is, uh, is big for me and, and big for us in terms of our communication. All right, one more, Adam Beasley. And, and I do apologize that I was the one who jinxed her kicker. I, that is my fault. Um, I, I have a different question. This team seems to have a great deal of mental toughness. And I'm curious, when you're evaluating players collegiately, maybe on other teams, how is that something, because certainly obviously something that's very important to flow in you all, how do you evaluate mental toughness and uh, when do you know when you have a player uh, if, if that toughness shows up? Well, I, I think, you know, that evaluation, there's a lot of things and a lot of situations and circumstances that, um, that you can look at that players have been through, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, college, back to high school, you know, the program they've been in maybe the individual circumstances in terms of playtime, injury. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you can carry, but really you, you really don't know until you get them in the building and put them in those situations. Uh, as we all know, this is a week to week league and it's, it's tough. It's hard uh, to win and, you know, to put the time in, in terms of meetings, practice, walkthroughs, and then, you add to that the, the nutrition and the, and the strength and condition. And you do all that stuff, understanding all it's going to do is give you a chance. I mean, if you don't do those things, you have no chance of competing in this league. So if you're willing to make those sacrifices to just give yourself a chance, then sometimes you're going to win, sometimes you're going to lose. But, you know, the more that you can have a history and recognize the history of guys having to overcome some things, uh, you feel better when those things do come along that you're going to be able to overcome them. 